Hey guys, Metal Driver here, back with another AEW Unrivaled Review. Today I'll be looking at Series 6, Hikaru Shida. On the side of the box you see an image of Hikaru Shida. Then on the back you see another image of Hikaru Shida. The event, date, and place in which this image was taken. And the rest of the figures that are in this wave. Alright, now that we have looked at the box, let's go ahead and open this figure up and take a closer look at Hikaru Shida. Alright, in here is Hikaru Shida, out of the packaging. But before we take a look at the figure, Let's go ahead and look at the accessories that she comes with. Alright, so she only comes with one accessory actually, and that is the AEW Women's Championship Belt. Now we have seen this belt previously with the Riho figure, however this belt does look to be slightly different, it does have some better detail, specifically on the letters A and the W, not so much the E. So if you look at both belts, you notice that Riho's belt, the A and the W, isn't as detailed or pronounced as the one on Sheeta. So this belt does look a little better. Other than that, it does appear that it is the same as the previous one. And unfortunately, as I said, this is the only accessory she comes with. She does not have a kendo stick. Then, looking at the head sculpt, I do think that this has a pretty good likeness to Sheeta. The face looks really good. The lips are painted well, the eyes and the eyebrows. The expression is just a stoic one. She has the long flowing hair, so it's not her modern or current look. Purple highlights at the end of the hair look really good. And look at the back, you've got more of the highlight, which looks really good. The paint looks really good. The sculpt of the hair is pretty good as well. No additional paint up here, just down at the ends. Then look at the rest of the body, starting with the torso. The top looks pretty good. You've got the purple lines across the top here. Paint looks pretty good on there. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. There's no fuzziness on the lines here. So it looks pretty clean for the most part. Then look at the back. We've got her hood, which is painted just as well as the front. Then on the back of the bottom half of the top, you have these black lines here. A little bit of purple there, but not a big deal. Then you've got her suspenders on the back here, attached to the skirt. Now, mine is a bit warped. That's how it looks out of the packaging, but this is an easy fix. You can fix this with a little bit of hot water and a hair dryer, so not a big deal. Then looking at the skirt, got this buckle up here. Silver is painted pretty well, some nice sculpt work. Got some yellows on the side here and here. Some good sculpt work on the skirt, so it's nice. No shading, it's just a solid black plastic. Then the suspenders on the front look pretty good. Pretty basic and generic, just a little bit of sculpt work. Then look at the bottom half of the figure. She's got red trunks, no additional paint there, just a solid red plastic. Look at the legs. Most of the legs are molded in red plastic. Got these red knee pads here, a little bit of black on the top. So no fuzziness, pretty solid line work all around. So it doesn't look sloppy. And on the side here, you've got some yellows, which are painted well. Then looking at her feet, you've got some white bottoms here with the reds on the tips of the boots. So they look pretty good. Not a lot of fuzziness or bad line work. In fact, the only bad line work I see is right here at the back of the heel on the left foot here. So overall, really good paintwork on the figure. Pretty solid looking. All right, going over the articulation, the head is on a ball joint and a hinge. So it does not look any further up due to the back of the hair. It can look that far down. Shoulder has a hinge which allows it to go really high up. It can go all the way around. There is a bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows which have great range of motion. A swivel and a hinge at the wrist. The upper part of the diaphragm can twist side to side. Doesn't tilt all that much. It can crunch that far forward and go that far back. There is a waist swivel, although mine is pretty tight and it's kind of tricky to maneuver it with this skirt right here. Ball joints at the hips which allow the legs to go that far out, then go that high up. There's a thigh cut, double jointed knees. There is no cut here at the ankle, but there is a hinge which allows it to go that high up, go that far down, and she has some really good ankle pivot. Alright, and here is Sheeta next to the only other two female figures that we have in the AEW Unrivaled line so far, Brandy and Riho. And looking at these three figures side by side, I think the scaling's a bit off. Hikaru Sheeta's build height is 5 foot 5 inches, and Brandy's build height is 5 foot 6, and this figure is standing with heels, and it looks like Sheeta is slightly taller than Brandy, and then Riho is billed at 5 foot 1, so I think that scale is okay between those two figures, but... Still seems a little bit smaller than, than what she should be compared to Sheeta, so I think the Sheeta figure is a bit on the tall side, but it's not that big of a deal. I think you can still work it. I think you can still work it around with these three figures. 
Alright, so what are my final thoughts on the Series 6 Hikaru Shida figure? I think this is a pretty solid figure. It's always nice to have another female figure in the line. I think it has a pretty good likeness to Shida. I do like that the women's championship belt is slightly more detailed than the previous released one. The paint apps look really good on the figure. The sculpt work is really good as well. The only gripe that I have is that she doesn't come with more accessories. It would have been nice to have some interchangeable hands. Or at the very least, a kendo stick with the figure. But aside from that, I think this is a solid figure. And one that you should definitely pick up for your collection. So that way you can build your women's division in your AEW collection. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe. If you want a chance to be shouted out in the next video, leave a comment. Just like Madden724 in the previous video commented if I can review Series 100 Undertaker. And as I replied, unfortunately, that figure is not available on ringside collectibles anymore. And I haven't seen it in stores in several months. But that is a really good figure, and it has an excellent head sculpt. Follow me on social media so you can keep up to date with all my wrestling figure photography. And I'll see you next time.